Hello everyone, welcome back. This is lesson five of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session six. And in this lesson, we will talk about parameter tuning for decision trees. Two, one lesson ago, we trained our first decision tree. So that was our uh, decision tree and it was a pretty basic one. Even before that, we trained a decision tree without restricting the depth for the tree. And tree we got as a result overfit. And then we trained a simpler tree. It was uh, pretty small and the performance of this tree wasn't impressive. And then in the previous lesson, we talked about the learning algorithm for building decision trees. And what we mentioned here that the tree has multiple parameters. So first, this max depth parameter, which tells us how deep the tree can grow, like how many layers in the tree we can have. And then the second parameter was that how we did decide if a leaf is sufficiently large, if a group is sufficiently large. So this is like another parameter that controls the minimum size of a group. So there are two parameters. There are, there are actually more parameters uh, in decision trees, but these two are probably the most important ones. And we can now tune them. We can tune them and select uh, these parameters. So by tuning, I mean uh, selecting uh, parameters in such a way that the performance, the AUC of this model or whatever other metric is maximized or minimized depending on what kind of metric it is. So since we use AUC here, we want to find parameters such that AUC is maximum. And we do this, of course, on the validation set. We try to find such parameters that uh, the score on validation is maximized. First of all, let's look at decision tree uh, one more time. So what kind of things it has? So yeah, there are quite a few parameters like criterion. This is the impurity measure we, we discussed. So there's Gini, there's entropy. All these parameters, we will leave them as is. Uh, what we are interested in is this max depth parameter which controls the size of the tree, and then mean leaf size, which controls the size of a leaf. And leaf is the node, the decision node, when we actually make a decision, when we say if prediction for the client is going to be default or not. So this is the decision leaf, and how many samples or observations we want to have in each leaf. So basically the size of a group. So these two are the most important ones, and the rest you can go through the documentation and see what uh, it's actually saying, uh, what kind of parameters are there. So you can, of course, play with other parameters. But yeah, let's start with these two. I think these two are the most important ones. Uh, let's train a decision tree. So first we will tune, we will adjust the max depth parameter, uh, and then we will find best value for the other parameter, which is in sample sleep. So what we do is, th this is very similar to what we did with logistic regression. So we will just iterate over different values of uh, max depth. So let's say we will try values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, no, 10, 15, 20, and none. So none means no restriction, and it should grow T as deep as possible, have as many layers as possible, and we already know what happens when uh, we don't restrict it. So, But for comparison, let's leave it here. So we train many different decision trees with different values of this parameter. So let's train fit x train y train. And then what we do is we uh, use predict proba our own validation data set. And remember, we need uh, the column with negative scores. So this will be our predictions. And uh, now we need to compute AC. So it's rock uh, RC AC score. Then it's y validation one prediction. And then let's just print it. Here we want to print depth the depth and the AC. Just round it to three digits, D and AC. To make it look nicer, to make it look a bit aligned, like I'll say for the first thing, I always want to have four characters. Um, you will see what it's doing. Yeah, so it always keeps it aligned. So now it's aligned and it has finished. And what we can see here is that uh, the best values seem to be this, right? So it's 76%. Uh, uh, Let's say the best one is five, but four and six are quite close. So we can say that all these three are good ones. And so our three should have the depth from four to six uh, layers, not one. And say if there was no other parameter, um, just this one, so I would probably go with the max depth of four. And the reason for this is uh, the three is a bit simpler. So it has four layers only, not five. It's easier to read, easier to understand what's going on there. Yeah, so maybe if that was the only parameter, I would go with just uh, four. But this is not the only parameter. We also talked about the other parameter, mean sample sleeve. 
So now we get an idea that the best depth is somewhere here for five or six. But, uh, what we can do now is for each of these depth values, we can try different mean sample leaves values and see what happens. So let's have another loop for D in this. And now what we want to do is iterate over different values for the other parameter, this mean sample sleeve. We can try values like 1, um, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, 100, 200, I don't know, maybe 500 as well. So this is, uh, remember, this is the side of, uh, of the group when we decide whether we want to split it again or not. Actually, uh, to be more precise, this is, uh, if we look in the documentation, so if we look in the documentation, mean sample, uh, mean samples leaf is the minimum number of samples required to be at the leaf node. Like this is our leaf node, so it has to have at least this amount of samples here. Yeah, let's do that. Then we'll take the code we have from here. And, uh, now we need to add one more parameter, mean uh, samples leaf s. Then we fit, we predict on the validation data set, we compute the RC. So now let's, um, here we will need, let's say three, three characters. So S and let's do it. Yeah, it's a bit actually difficult to read here now, like what are the values here? We can see, so this 64, so this one is even better, 77% uh, dot four. And here we have even even more, like 78%. So it seems that it's actually better to have slightly larger trees, but then put a limit on the number of samples per group, which makes sense. In some cases, it will stop splitting before going to the level num number six, because simply there are not enough samples. So this one is a bit difficult to look at. So what we can do now is instead of printing it and then going through these numbers, ourselves, what we can do is we can just put this in a data frame. So let's say we have scores, then uh, what we will add to this scores list, we will add our D, our S and AC. Right? So we will put that in scores and then we'll create a data frame from that in data frame scores and does data frame scores. So this is how it looks like. And of course we need to give names to the columns columns, um, so that would be max depth, meals, samples leaf, and then AC. So let me just put this in the variable. And this is better now. What we can do now is just sort by AC. And it should be, it should be ascending, not ascending, so ascending false. And we see that the depth of six seems to be the best one when we put a limit on the size of the leaf. But, uh, we can look at this a bit differently. This is informative, of course, but we can turn this data frame into, so this has pairs like max, uh, depth, mean samples and value. We can turn this into a data frame where on the rows we have, let's say mean samples leaf and columns we have max depth and the cells will be AUC. So for that, we can do pivot. Pivot is doing exactly that. When we have three values, uh, so first could be, let's say column, row, value, column, row, cell. So then index would be, this is what we put as a row. So mean uh, samples leaf, then uh, columns will be max depth, and then uh, values will be AUC. So this is the table we get. This I think is maybe more, it's easier to see what's going on than uh, just a wall of text. We see that this one is largest. So I think it's actually better if we, let's say, just create the frame scores pivot. So we have this other frame that is course pivot. Yeah, so what we can do with this, we can now visualize it as a heat map. So first of all, maybe just uh, let's look at this the rounded a little bit. Yeah, so now it's a bit easier to see this one is the, the highest one. And uh, what we can do now is we can visualize it as a heat map. And this is something we have in Seaborn. Um, there's this heat map. And I think what we need to do here is just pass this data frame. So let's see if it works. 
Yeah, so it doesn't show us the, the values here. There is a parameter called annotation, uh, which should be true. And then we can say how exactly we want to format our annotations, which is um, something like this. Yes, yeah, so we want to round our AUCs with uh, three numbers. Okay, it doesn't like this. I think for Seaborn, we just need to remove the person's height. Okay, yeah. This maybe is a bit easier to see what is the highest value because it's the lightest one. So the most uh, light and then the, the darkest is the worst one. So we're interested in this cell. Mean sample leaves is 15. And I know it's why it's called AUC6, but this is uh, max depth 6. Okay, and um, I need to add here that this way of selecting the best parameter is could be suboptimal. So we first uh, thought, okay, what could be the best uh, max depth values? So it can be four, five, and six. And we thought, okay, let's fix this. And for these three, try other values of mean sample leaves. But it could be that maybe max depth of seven or 10 or something else works better, but we didn't try going there because first we tuned the max depth parameter and then we selected the best mean sample sleeve. So actually for this particular data set, it makes sense to try more values, but if a data set is big, then we cannot uh, try every possible combination, right? So we need to somehow restrict our search space when we are looking for the best uh, parameters. Uh, that's why it usually makes sense first to tune, at least this is how I do this. I first tune the max depth parameter and then and after that, I tune the mean sample sleeve parameter. We can actually experiment here because, uh, yeah, this is a pretty small data set. Training here is fast. Uh, yeah, let's try other values and maybe even none. And then let's see what happens. Uh, we can see that actually max step of 10 and mean sample sleeve of 15 gives the best performance. And the second best is when we don't restrict the depth of the tree, but uh, we only restrict the size of the leaf. Now that's interesting. I actually didn't try that before. Yeah, so you see we can get slightly better performance. So by like 0.4%, but it's worth keeping in mind that uh, it can be difficult to try every possible combination. And here we have only two parameters. We tried only two parameters, but there are actually more parameters. And that's why I personally first look for the best depth and then look for the best uh, sample leaves. Okay, yeah, let, let's see what actually happens here. And this one, we see that this one, this one, and this one are quite good. I got there, this one as well. And we can choose whatever we want. I think I would still go with this one because it's a relatively small tree. The, the performance between them is not significantly different, but it's up to you to actually, like I think this could be uh, also fine. I wouldn't go with this one because I think it can be a bit dangerous when you don't control the size of the tree. It can just uh, be too big. So this is how we tune the parameters for decision tree. So first we tune the max depth, then we tune the mean sample sleeve. Yeah, I think what we need to do now is uh, try in the final decision tree. Decision tree classifier. So max depth, uh, I said I will go with this, 6, and then mean sample leaves, 15. So let me try it. Okay, we trained it and this is something we will use uh, then at the end for comparing multiple models because what we will do now in the next lesson, we will actually look at how we can combine multiple decision trees together in one big model. So we will talk about random forest. See you soon.